Mimi and Glenn. Hello, how are you all? How are you? I'm okay myself. Yeah, not doing too bad. Not doing too bad, and we'll be 41 soon. Yeah. It will, and I will be officially decrepit. I will be in my 40s, as opposed to 40. I was trying to point out the difference to that to people the other day, who were like in their 20s, and saying, no, no, massive difference between being 40 in your 40s. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's only a number. You're 25. You don't have an opinion on this. (laughs) Um, but there you go. Not happy. Who's that? Sorry. Pardon. Your friend. Oh, who? Just uh, turned fifty-one. He's not very happy about this. <laughs> I don't blame him for being. But there you go. I suppose fifty-one is the new middle age. He used to be like begins at forty, but I think he now begins at fifty, sixty. Yeah. I think. But there you go. Speaking of people getting older, uh, we're going to be talking about the second doctor today. So obviously, the doctor getting older. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Bit of history then, because we won't be talking too much about uh, the actual history behind it. But uh, William Hartnell, he got very ill towards the end of his uh, tenure as the doctor. Uh, he had. Oh, sorry? Yeah, it's, it's what they used to call hardening of the arteries. So, obviously, fat build up around the arteries and it restricts the flow of blood, especially to places like the brain. Um, so, he forgot a lot of his lines. Uh, we found it difficult to remember them. And because, basically, he was, he was what, 58? He was about 58 when he left. Yeah. Um, put that into context, that's about the same age that Peter Cabaldi is now. Yeah. Um, whereas, back then, 58 was old. Yeah. I... Yeah, I, I, he was elderly. It was considered elderly. I don't consider 58 elderly, personally. Um, I don't think society does anymore. So, yes, yeah, just to give you a bit of context on that one, he was uh, a lot older back then than maybe he should have been considered to be. But uh, regardless, wasn't... I was going to say, back then, you would uh, retire at 65 and then you were expected to die quietly by the fire a couple of years later. Pretty much. Pretty much, um, which ironically is kind of what happened to Hartnell. Well, he lasted another 10 years. He died in 1976 when I was born. Um, but yes, he was basically not fired, but they wished him luck in all his future endeavours. Let's put it that way. Um, he was put out to pasture and Patrick Chowson was the actor that we decided to, to be brought in. Now, I did try and find um, people who were considered to be uh, the second Doctor. And it was people like Ron Moody. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, Ron Moody, Cyril Cusack, uh, quite a few sort of actors of that period. I think Peter Cushing was, in fact, considered for the role of the second Doctor. Mm-hmm. But by then he'd appeared as Doctor Who in the film, so they thought it might be a, a nice transition yeah. if he became the Doctor. Didn't happen. Because he basically didn't want to commit himself to a full television role. Uh, mainly because back then television was considered to be the sort of poor relation of uh, film, no, uh, so people just didn't want to do it. I was going the other way around. No, that, that was simply because of Friends when they all start commanding the salaries of a million dollars per episode. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's things like Friends and Frasier was the other one I would say sort of contributed to it. Um, or, you know, and the fact that you had a lot of television like HBO who could sort of give a lot of money because they they. They don't have to give it away to other people in their subscription only so they can make a lot more money. And yeah, television is a different industry than it was back then. Um, but yeah, Patrick Charlton was brought in. Uh, Patrick, I'm not Reese Shea Smith. <sighs> <laughs> Less said about that, the better. You're not um, but that still, are you? <laughs> oh, always, always until my dying day. That'll be my last words. Not Reese Shea Smith. And that'll confuse everybody. Just the way he popped in, it was like as if he was doing Pam D. Hello. <laughs> oh, he was just that, and the fact that nothing about him was Patrick Chowton. The, the costume was wrong on him, the, the hair didn't look right. Just nothing about it. He looked like Pam Doove, basically. Yeah, I think it was just the height. Yeah, it was everything, just didn't 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 work. But anyway, Patrick Chowton in reality was very good. Um well known character actor, been 
around a long, long time, even by then, and was uh, very well respected. Um, they took a chance, because it could have gone terribly wrong, um, but they wanted a faster pace, and they wanted more Monster of the Week, while the purely historical sort of went away. Patrick. You did get them, they, they kind of popped up, but nine times out of ten, this is when Doctor Who turned into a monster show. Um, and and the, the second Doctor was seen as more of the time, because he was considered to be a bit beetly, a bit clowny. Um, whereas in, in modern times, the second Doctor is well, it's basically regarded as a much darker character than the 60s would have had you believe. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, second Doctor for you, Lee. Is he is he up there with the best of them, or is he not one of your favourites? I love I love the second Doctor, and it was there specifically. I think for when he's running away from the Cybermen men down the alleyway from uh, St Paul's, mm. he's just lifted his leg, his legs up, going, "Oh, oh, oh, oh my giddy arms!" <laughs> that was what made him. I love this man. <laughs> See, I that my first encounter with him was was probably not one of the fairer depictions and that would have been in the five doctors um because i didn't see much of his tenure up until sort of a few years ago really uh because it didn't exist most of it um oh he, he wasn't out on vhs or anything like that um along with and they didn't tend to repeat those ones because oh, they're black and white and therefore boring because that's how that works um, so they just didn't show it. So I, I have seen it in things like the War Games, which you know goes on for like ten episodes. Is it? Yeah, about ten or eleven, something ridiculous like that. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a long story. I mean, they go on about Trial of the Time Lord being long, and it is, but at least it's divided up into separate stories. Yeah, this isn't. The War Games is just one long story, and to be fair, you probably could have condensed it down to about four. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm saying it's bad. It isn't bad. It's brilliant, but it's long. Um, dedicated to watch this yes absolutely you can't just say I'll just slip it on and watch it in the background you can't um, but yeah um, it was a change it was a massive change and, and obviously you grow up being told that first doctor grumpy old man second doctor bit of a clown and then you actually watch it and like I say it, it isn't at all he's quite a dark character the dark undercurrent of him when he tries to fire it by being the cheeky cheesy chap but you can see it on his face and it doesn't really mean it. It's a bit like uh, Seven. And Eleven. Yeah. Eleven of the same happy demeanour mm. and a bit of a, you know, acted like the clown but it was one of those things where underestimate him at your peril. Yes. Because he can fuck you up. And he, they sort of had undercurrent to that with Ten as well. But they don't really compare. You never see the comparison with 10 and 2. But they're pretty similar. Mm-hmm. They're very similar characters. And certainly at the start of the second Doctor's tenure, they, on purpose, made him seem a little bit dodgy. Mm-hmm. Because they wanted you not to trust him straight away. Yeah, they had that with Ben and Polly. Really. No, we don't believe you, the Doctor. What you've, what you've done with him? Don't yeah, Daleks is you are the Doctor. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, what a story to start on. Quite frankly, Power of the Daleks. If you're going to start with a story, that's probably the story you want to begin with, isn't it? I love that. Um, because uh, I've got the uh, novel right because in the nineties they weren't they weren't around on video or anything. That's pretty. Cool. No. So I've got the novels and they were absolutely brilliant. Was it Ian Martyr? Did it? No, it was uh, John Peel. John Peel, there we go. He did the other one, the Evil of the Daleks as well. Yeah, that's one with Victoria, isn't it? Victoria Wasfield. Yeah. Um, again, where there's some sort of high concept sci-fi going on with that one as well. But Power of the Daleks, if you you know, if you've never seen it, it's basically it's one of those ones. And Second Doctor did a lot of these, mm-hmm. crushing inevitability. Yeah. You know what's going to happen. Because it's going to be awful. And they did it with that. They did it with the evil of the Daleks. They did it with Tomb of the Cybermen. Um, all these things where people just won't listen. Mm-hmm. 
and the doctors they did this a lot with uh, Davison as well they, or they tried to do it a lot with Davison like snake dance where you know and the doctor knows that this situation is going to happen it's going to be awful and they often end on downer endings whereas snake dance doesn't power of the Daleks does <laughs> it's the oh, he wins but it's a downer ending I would say yeah that's true um and even thing like jamie and and uh, zoe as well because uh, obviously he started off with ben and polly he kept them for a few um i think it was the rest of the season yeah and then they disappeared where they left and uh, jamie stayed on and then they went to victoria yeah i mean his <sighs> His relationship with Jamie is probably one of the best relation doctor companion relationships. Yes, I think everybody's been trying to get that back. They tried to get it back with uh, Ian Martin when he was playing Harry and the Doctor uh, with the fourth Doctor, but it didn't work out because he found that he was too much of an action man himself. Well, yeah, because I think they, if I remember correctly, they wanted an older Doctor, and he was supposed to be. They wanted effectively Picard and Riker. Yeah. Whereas Picard, obviously, he had to stay on the ship. He was a bit of an older man. Riker was the strong arm man. That's what they wanted for the Doctor in there. Because it was there the guy Richard Hearn, is it, who played Mr. Pastry? I think he was the guy. Uh, Mr. Pastry, if you remember Clive Dunn's granddad, if you're of a certain age, that kind of thing. Um, but Hearn wanted to play it as Mr. Pastry, and the BBC said, "No, no, <laughs> no. not a fucking chance." So he, he went by the wayside. And Tom Baker. Now Tom Baker's an imposing chap. Oh, yeah. Still. Um, so, yeah, sadly, Harry wasn't needed as much as, as he was when he left after the first, which is a shame. I, I loved Harry. But, yeah, that's what Jamie effectively was. He was the big warrior. Uh, was Fraser Hines. Um, and, like I say, they had a great relationship on and off screen. Uh, because they, they pretty much were bros. Yeah, they were. <laughs> uh, and you, you can see loads of pictures of them just acting like twats basically, um, and, and just having a whale of a time. And you could tell, and Jamie's been, I mean, to be fair, Fraser Hines keeps coming back because he's in the big finish lot, and I yeah. think he, he voices the second Doctor now. Does he? Ooh. Yeah, he actually does. He does quite a, a, an admirable impression of uh, Pratchett, but he would. He spent a lot of time with it, yeah. to be fair. Um, okay, because they've got a guy, and I, I'm really sorry, I can't remember his name, who does the John Pertwee. He does the third Doctor, and he's really good. Um, but yeah, Fraser, uh, he does that and, um, not Ian Lavender, the guy who plays Chesterton, Ian, oh, I can't remember, he does the first Doctor. Oh, God, I can't I can't remember his name. Begins with an L, I think. Anyway, um, he won't be doing it for much longer because Bradley's coming in and doing it, obviously. Um, but yes, Fraser Hines. Yeah, Filch. Right, that guy who does Filch, right, I think he's been in something to do with Doctor Who. Um, but anyway, <laughs> what do you um, oh, William, William can't remember. Anyway, William something. <laughs> poor, poor, poor William. <laughs> We've forgotten your name, mate. But never mind. Uh, we'll look it up. Um, so yeah, Jamie came in, and then it was basically just different female companions. I suppose the classic lineup would be Jamie and Zoe. Yeah, with our silver sparkly capsules and. Forever bent. Oh, I remember about how she always seemed to be forever bent over. Because <laughs> you had Victoria as well, but she didn't really last too long. And Victoria, it's always she went from uh, being a crude Victoria to wearing a mini skirt within a couple of episodes. Yeah, I that's I always find it a bit weird when you do get people or companions that are historical. Mm-hmm. It's the whole Katarina thing. Why will the you know will they understand? Will they grasp certain concepts? And I think a Victorian character could have. Well, Charlie, obviously in the, in the Eight Doctor stuff, she's Edwardian. She accepts it without question. Generally, I suppose it's the type of person, isn't it, rather than the time that they're from? Because when he travelled with Mary Shelley, she pretty much accepted everything. Um, by the way, if you never listened to those, listen to those. They're great. <laughs> Yeah, same here, especially seeing as it's getting to that time of year now where we need to be on our ball uh, because of it. But uh, 
favourite second Doctor foes? We'll start with the foes. Um, any sort of particular foe sort of jumps out at you that you do like watching? It's always the Cybermen. Cybermen always. They were his enemies, really. Mm. Daleks are very definitely the first Doctor and everybody else's. But the Cybermen, they were his. Seemed to have yeah. a massive, massive story with them. Yeah, I mean, it's weird with the Daleks because... Uh, if you actually look at some of the doctors, Troughton had more stories than Hartnell, I think. But I would, yeah, I'm, a, I'm with you. I would never consider them to be the second Doctor. If I was considering them first and ten, yeah, because they're not third. He only had a few stories with them, and you could sort of, you could almost see the contempt dripping out of Tom Pertwee for Daleks. He fucking hated him. Yeah. And then Tom Baker, pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, and he, he never had stories. He had Genesis. Yeah. But you could sort of tell he didn't really like them. Yeah. Uh, Davison only had one. Yeah, the second best uh, Dalek story. See, so, yeah, the Serpent of Ireland. That was just devastating to watch that one. Everybody died. Ah, I love it. Is it like Revelation? I like Revelation as well. I think it's the best fish from that one. There's only, there's only one that, the thing that spoils that. That's Alexis Sale. Just... Spoils it. Um, and obviously Remembrance is probably the third best Dalek story. I would say, but um, yeah, absolutely. I, I would say the same. It's where they sort of refined them, isn't it? Yeah. They seemed slightly different, they were slightly different every time they came back from each other. And then when they came back for uh, for the final time, they were pretty much like the Cybermen were normal. Yeah, that was the invasion, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, because obviously you had the moon base, you had um, two. Weed in space. Yeah, we in space. That's where Zoe first popped up, I believe. I think. I think so. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, like you say, they evolved every time they were slightly different. You were seeing them sort of further along. Uh, and it, that's something that's been sort of kept to this day. Every time you see the Cybermen, they're just that ever so slightly more evolved than they were the last time. And then uh, by the time we get to the you see them all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say sort of like the second Doctor, I would say the Cybermen are probably his defining yeah. villains. Mm. Although Miss, I mean, guess Missy, you could say, but mm. um, which isn't surprising that he has sort of the second most amount of master appearances because mm. he's such a, a Pertwee fan. But, I, you know, um, the Cybermen, definitely. I would say the Great Intelligence as well is probably his. Yeah. Um, and certainly Unit popping up as well. Yes. Uh, That's when you first meet the Brigadier. It was not the Brigadier, but it was... Colonel. Colonel? Colonel Lethbridge Stewart? I can't remember. <laughs> he'll always be the Colonel. Uh, sorry, he'll always be the Brigadier to me. But yeah, that's where he first meets Lethbridge Stewart. Um, and yeah, it, I, the Cybermen definitely the dominate. Yeti. Yeah, exactly. Sort of the Yeti with the great intelligence and that kind of thing. And... Also, we don't see it, but I have a feeling um, that he is the doctor that messes with um, oh, Lady Pinfort. Yes. Because she calls him a silly little man. Yes. Um, so it would make sense to me that he's the one who starts messing around with her timeline. Um, but we don't really, well, we don't see that at all. Um, what's your favourite story from, from the second doctor? Gonna have to go with Tomb of the Cybermen. Yeah. Because yeah. just, it's just absolutely incredible. You we go there and you say, no, don't do this. And then they start interfering and then everything just goes to shit. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like, like we said, it's that crushing inevitability. He's there shouting at them, do not do this. Yeah. You don't know what you're messing with. And uh, oh, we we know, we, we, we'll be fine. No, you're never it's, fine. It's Doctor Who. You're never going to be fine. <laughs> you're all dead. You're all dead, is what you are. I think they all do die in that as well. Yes, um, there's only um, him, Jamie and Victoria survive. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, yeah. It's, it's the ninth Doctor, which is just this one that everybody lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, it's, it's like uh, there's a few Doctor Who stories where just everybody dies because you've got, like, um, Horror of Fang Rock. Mm. Nobody but the Doctor and Leela survive it. Yeah, I 
didn't like her. And well, I was terrified of that one when I saw that one when I was little. That is a really <laughs> good one. It's, it's Terence Dix being a complete burke, is that one. It's just saying, ha, 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 ha. Because, like, no one's getting out of this alive, even the characters you really like. It's a bit George R.R. R. Martin. Um, you really like this character that we built up and made it out to be a nice guy? Nah, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and two of the Cybermen's a bit like that. Um, it's also got a prominent black character in it. Yes. As well. Um, Not that you say as much, but yeah, there's a little bit. No. But they, they did try in the early days um, to, to, to sort of be a bit more racially sensitive, uh, which they do to this day, obviously, it's that kind of show. But uh, yeah, Tomb of the Cybermen is, is a classic. I like Evil of the Daleks as well, because I think it's very ahead of its time story-wise. Yes. That's Whereas, you know... Victorian steampunk thing as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's got that going for it. It's got this... It's, it's got sort of questions of nature versus nurture. It's got genetics in there as well. Primary, yeah, all right, rudimentary genetics. But it's still got... Are Daleks the way they are because they've been made like that, or because they've you know um, evolved like that, or can you have a good Dalek? Yeah, no, which is a question. They still they still do it to this day. I mean, they did it with Into the Dalek, yeah. and it turns out well, it, it's. I've got the uh, human part, which is in the end, so we still turned out bad. But they left those two. Um... They were the ones who started off the entire uh, Dalek uh, battle in that uh, in that sea story, if I remember rightly. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Mega sign on the head, so you could remember who they were. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it was something they explored in the comics as well. You know, good Daleks and and uh, a good Dalek breaking off and and fighting against the Daleks and the Cybermen as well. They obviously had the famously the the Cybermen. They decided he didn't want to be a Cyberman anymore and, and fight against them. Um, and it's something that sort of you get in fan fiction. If you read some really bad Doctor Who fan fiction, you always see the Dalek. I'm a good Dalek. And it's like even in Into the Dalek, they said that the Dalek's nature is basically just to exterminate and kill. It's just that the target is different. Uh, I think, you know, that's probably the best you can hope for. With And the Doctor kind of knows that in, in Evil of the Daleks as well. You do sort of get that feeling that the, the, he doesn't give them any credence either. Um, but yeah, uh, favorite second Doctor companion? Um, actually, none of them. They're all no, they kind of uh, they're all good in their own way with their little double acts here and there. But none of them really stand stand out. They're all very very good in their own way. I really like Jamie. I think that's because I grew up with him as Joe Sugden. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have grew up with him as Joe Sugden. Family do now, but he never did when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I used to watch it when I was off school, because uh, when I was a kid, I don't know if it was the same in the Time TV region, but in the Yorkshire TV region, it started off as a lunchtime programme. No. It was you, never... We had the Sullivan's. <laughs> oh, Sullivan's where Kylie popped up first, famously. But no, I think it was on after the Sullivan's or just before the Sullivan's. But I do remember it being on at lunchtime uh, with Ali Sugden telling Joe off. And I'm thinking, I like Joe. And then I find out he was a Doctor Who companion. It's like, I really like Joe Sugden, so I really like this companion. Um, and I think the first time I found that out was in The Two Doctors, which mm -hmm. I like <laughs> The Two Doctors. I, I, know, I love that story. It's fun. It's bloody gruesome, but... Everyone dies in that one as well, don't they? Uh, yes, <laughs> including poor Oscar. Yeah. Oscar Bocciabi, Um who I, I really like him as a character. Again, I, I think the only thing I could say wrong about The Two Doctors is that it, it goes on for one part too many. Yes. There's a lot of filler because they were in Barcelona on a jolly. Not Barcelona, Seville. Yeah. They were on a bit of a jolly. Um, and they wanted to justify it by filming another part. But the only other thing that I would say about the two doctors is that Troughton doesn't look well by that point. Because obviously he wasn't. He died not long after making it. Um, but yeah, it was sort of a last hurrah. And 
the do- the doctors in it weren't very nice. Mm-hmm. Is the other thing I would say. Because you would think the doctors would be quite nice to each other, but they they sort of again had this idea that old doctor means crotchety doctor. Yeah, wasn't he? he was just. He was nice. Mm-hmm. Unless you unless you crossed him. Yeah. But I think. Six doctor. He wasn't a nice person. He was a good man, just not nice. That's what I like. <sighs> He just had no time for idiots. And when you're the doctor, most people are idiots. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what, that's, that's the way I always saw it. He's so intelligent. He's so high. He's always going to be the most intelligent man in the room. Yeah, same so it's like, he's, uh, he's not a nice person. He's a good man. <laughs> well, he's, yeah. I mean, it, it's always the sixth doctor they pick. If you look at some of the fourth doctor stories, mm-hmm. he's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> if you, uh, the one the great one to pick out on this one, and he he's just an asshole from start to finish. Caesar Doom, mm-hmm. yes, he's narky and irritable and nasty to everybody, and he just hates everybody. He's getting in his way. Even Sarah pisses him off most of the time in that story. And yet, our fourth Doctor is happy, smiley, eccentric. No, he's a tosser in some of the stories he's in. He's <laughs> the fourth Doctor, which is kind of why I like him, but. Again, it's that old thing of, you know, I mean, the Tenth Doctor says it in uh, Rise of the Cybermen, or Age of Steel it is, actually. And it says, you know, um, you'd be the most intelligent man in the room if, if I wasn't here. Yep. So <laughs> when you're there and you're you're the smartest man in the room always and you're having to deal with these what must seem like toddlers, you're going to get narky. Yeah. So that's all I always saw Six to be. Yeah. And to a certain extent, two. Fifth. But he was younger. What's that? Fifth even used to get a little bit naughty about all these bloody idiots around them. <laughs> yeah, I always think five used to get frustrated. Mm. That's when his voice used to go higher. Yes. <laughs> now I will explain it one more time. <laughs> because he was basically just the nicest man in the world by that point. Yeah, but he had um, three idiots with him, really. I mean, I think, oh. yeah. Well, two idiots and Nissa. Yes. Nissa was never an idiot. She's the only one that I think people don't get annoyed by. Mm. She's always the voice of reason. But um, she was the only one who got a reasonable exit story as well. Nissa, yeah. But she came back, didn't she? She's come back in the big finish. Mm. Uh, to be with him and Eremim, I think. Uh, I'm sure she does. But anyway, um, yeah, the second Doctor was obviously uh, there's Davison, there's. Colin Baker, there's Patrick, uh, not uh, Sylvester McCoy, and Matt Smith have all said that they're his, he's their favourite Doctor. Yeah. And that, that he has informed them, and certainly the 11th Doctor, you can yeah, definitely yes. tell. But you've got the bow tie, you've got that, you've got the whole friendly old man, but there's a lot of darkness going in there. You've got the creepy um, hairstyle as well. <laughs> yeah. You've got the gawkiness as well, and the seeming like a clown, people tend to underestimate the 11th Doctor. Yeah, because he looks so very young and he's a bit clownish and clumsy. And... But they're right, the man said, one thing you never ever put in a trap, and that's him. Yeah, you got that. And obviously Madame Kavarian found out, do not fuck with it. Oh, well, she found out, do not fuck with Amy Pond as well. But yeah. certainly do not fuck with the Doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, there's a... Uh, it's in, uh, is it only human? But it, it's, it's when 10 turns back into 10 from being John Smith. Yeah. And he's doing that whole thing of pretending to fall about the, the family of bloods chip. Mm-hmm, he's not his... When in fact, he's fucking it up. Yeah. <laughs> That's very second doctor. You should never have let them press all those buttons. Yeah. You've done it to yourself. But I think that's where it first comes in that, that whole, I haven't really beaten you. You've done it to yourself. Yeah. And I've just let you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, Imagine why he would have done it even if he decided he was going to fuck with them and beat them. Again, going back to the family of blood, that whole thing, you know, we wanted to be immortal and he made us immortal. That was the fury of a Time Lord. And that's, that's, I think that stems not from one because they were just working out the character. They were forced to come up with different character traits. They were forced to come up with the backstory almost. Because that's the weird thing about Doctor. I was thinking about this the other day, is that most TV shows, and even now, 
come out with a, a Bible attached to them, a backstory, something that you have to adhere to. Doctor Who never has had that. Kind of got it's, it, and then they just said, nah, fuck that, we'll do it this way. And then uh, some of the crazy fans just go crazy. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's always been a show that's been made upon the fly because of circumstance. So obviously, the second Doctor only came about because the first Doctor couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And then... I was just about to mention the discontinuity guide. That was uh, one of the best books you can find on Doctor Who. It showed yeah. you ever just completely uh, say, fuck it, let's do it our way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got like... Um... In, in the second and third Doctor eras is when Robert Holmes came in yeah. and started making things like the Time Lords. Mm -hmm. Because obviously the Time Lords, before you actually find out, this is where you find out that the Doctor's a liar yeah. in the war games. Because he's always said, I, I decided I wanted to travel the universe. I wanted to just go see things. I, I didn't do this. And my people, I don't know where they are and all this kind of crap. It turns out he's a criminal. <laughs> he's stolen a Sardis he's done something that he shouldn't have done that still we don't know what it is we'll never find out I think we we may we may do but not for a long time or it's one of those things that will be alluded to probably shot and busted on his missus <laughs> oh no I reckon he's I reckon he's done something properly heinous yeah. I reckon he's killed a guy or something like that or he's, he's committed genocide on a massive level or something. He's trying to atone for it. He's atoning for something. Well, he did. Time war, but uh, how can you make that mistake twice? Genocide? Yeah. Before that, First even, because... Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, it's, it's something we... Because Painfort alluded to it, didn't she? She always said, I know your secret. I know what, what you did. Um, and that that was the second Doctor that she alluded to. So it's you know, but obviously when he gets put on trial by the Time Lords, that's when we see the Time Lords yeah. for the first time. And the whole concept of regeneration is actually named regen. I don't think it's called regeneration. Mm -hmm. I think it's called it's time for you to choose a new body. Yeah. I really hate that bit. Can I just say? <laughs> <laughs> Takes too long. Just get on with it. I know. Um, oh. <laughs> no, you don't. There's no actual regeneration sequence. Because obviously that and Spearhead filmed in black and white and then Spearhead in colour. Yeah. Um, Pertwee and Troughton sort of also had to... They had to make up the fact that the Doctor doesn't get on with his other regenerations. Yeah. Uh, because now I'm, I'm never quite sure... Whether they got on in real life or not. Huh? I always think not. Because mm -hmm. Pertwee was infamously hard to get on with. Mm -hmm. There's very few people who got on with him. Yeah. Um, he didn't get on with his wife and she fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think there were other reasons for that that I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, getting too close to certain people. I don't mean the Brigadier. Mm -hmm. uh, got on with him, obviously, but then I, I Nicholas Cartney got on with everybody. Yeah. But I always got the feeling that he was sort of him and Pertwee when they were playing up that whole I'm better than you mm -hmm. thing. I mean, obviously, they, they thought that they were. Mm -hmm. And then you get Tom Baker who couldn't give a shit about any of it because mm -hmm. I know I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got sort of the modern era doctors who can't be asked with any of that. Yeah. Especially Colin Baker, she cannot be bothered with any of that bollocks. <laughs> um, but it is funny to see him do it on the uh, the Five Doctors issue reboot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do like that story. The three doctors. I love the Three Doctors. It's one of my favourite. Purely and simply for the fact that it, it's the Brigadier's finest hour. Yeah. It's just refusal to believe anything going on. <laughs> yeah. And it's just the Second Doctor's been fucking with him all this time. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the second Doctor's uh, <laughs> best line, I think. Uh, hmm, I think we can confuse it. Do we have a television set handy? <laughs> <laughs> isn't, we, it isn't, he doesn't say you redecorate, I don't like it. I, mean, I, don't know. I can't remember if he does. I can't remember if it's out of the five Doctors. He certainly says the five Doctors. I, th I think it's the five Doctors. See? 
it does make allusions to the change of decor, but um, yes, I may call you Joe main time. He's got all that, and the fact that they, that they pair him off with Benton as well, mm-hmm. which is great. It's genius. Yeah, just like him and Jamie again. Yeah, he he work, He's one of them few. He's that rare thing that he works better with a male companion mm-hmm. than he does girls, and I don't know why. I I don't know why that would be. Mm-hmm. I don't know either. Odd. But it is true, he tends to work better with male companions than he does female companions, does although he does have that tremendous speech in Simon Simon Victoria. Slightly patronising as well, but he did he did love Victoria. He did, and I think he loved Zoe as well in his own way. I think Zoe pissed him off because she she stood away. Yeah. And also she was clever. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like didn't like that. Um which is funny because it's usually third doctor that gets accused of that. And I don't think that he, he starts off being pissed off by Liz. Yeah. Then- but he loves her towards the end of that series, that first season he does. He loves Liz because she's on his level. She understands him. He doesn't have to explain nothing. Yeah. And I think Joe gets there in the end. But when Joe's first there, he's, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. She, this this woman's stupid. Except she's not. It's like, which is all, totally unfair to Joe Grant. She's not stupid. She's just extremely naive about everything. She's not because she's supposed to be like nineteen or something, isn't she? Yeah. And I think, and she could have intelligence a lot. True. True. I really like Joe. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think she left to marry somebody else. He did. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but it was Rose Tyler that was his first. Mm. That was his first companion he fell in love with. Mm. It wasn't, it wasn't no, Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. Or Sarah Joe. Jane. Or Nissa. No. I reckon he was banging Nissa. I've thought that for a while, actually. He definitely didn't love Perry. <laughs> I think, yeah, I see, I, I think he did. If you look, watch last, uh, uh, sorry, Trial of a Time Lord, he did love Perry. Oh, yeah. I was just being a bit sarcastic. Oh, I know, I know. I mean, their relation uh, started off with a nice bit of chalking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a bit BDSME. Yes. A bit kinky. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I mean, we will cover it in a later episode, yeah. but what do you think of the, the Seventh Doctor and Ace? Do you think there was any, any... I don't think there was anything going on with nah, those two. That's definitely uh, teaching people... Uh, Father-daughter. I would say father-daughter. Yeah, it was that kind of relationship. He's very... Not patronising, paternal, paternal towards her. Realised there was just some poor fifteen-year-old kid who got uh, lost, and then uh, then realised it was him who had been manipulating her, and he didn't know. Well, it was. Um, it's it's what it, to sort of bring it to a modern sensibility. It's Kingsman. It's it's um, what Harry and Eggsy basically. He sees potential in Ace. Yeah, I haven't seen. You know. <laughs> It's good. You should see it. But yeah, it's that sort of thing. He sees this, this, this fangling basically, and he says, "There's potential in this guy." And it's the same with, with, because he never tells her the answer. He always tries to get her to work it out for herself. Yes. I think that's that's you can sort of track that back to Second Doctor and Jamie as well. That he wanted Jamie to. He saw potential in Jamie. He thought that Jamie could be more than he want that more than he was. Mm-hmm. And they they totally Donna Noble both him and Zoe. Mm-hmm. Goes, oh yeah, they they they'll never remember that. They'll remember the, f- if I remember correctly, they they will remember their adventure with him, but no more. Yeah. Poor Jamie. Yeah, definitely poor Jamie because he kept coming back as well because he was, like I say, in the two Doctors and Zoe. Now this is the one that always gets me in the Five Doctors. Mm. Because how would this right okay so the the setup is is that they're phantoms created by rassilon yep to catch the doctor out and stop him going into the the throne room yeah into the into the tomb how would the second doctor know that jamie and zoe had been taken away from him <sighs> Meh? Uh, the nope. third doctor would know yeah but it wouldn't make sense to have them there with the third doctor because they never travelled with the third doctor. Mm-hmm. So they have to be with the second doctor. But how would the second doctor know 
what had happened because at that point he won't remember anything that he's done with the third doctor even if he it is a post a, a three doctors a, a second doctor and that's where the season six b comes into it isn't it yeah yeah <laughs> no, or, no. <laughs> or it's just a television program and we shouldn't be thinking too hard about it yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the other way you can think about it isn't it Season 6 being just frustrated me and made me want to quit Doctor Who forever when I was trying to work it out. Yeah, so Season 6 being is things like the two, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the, the two Doctors, what, yeah. Jay, it's basically that they were pulled out of time, him and Jamie, and they go around doing missions to the Time Lords. Yes. So they're basically Black Ops. Yeah. Um, they look a lot of that in the, in the uh, Faction Paradox with the Eighth Doctor, don't they? Yeah. Well, the, the Eighth Doctor basically is Time Lord's Black Ops operative by that point, isn't he? Um, I reckon they should do that again. They should totally do that with uh, Whitaker. They're not going to, but they should totally do that. Um, I mean, what what do, do you think? Maybe Jodie Whitaker will watch the Second Doctor and be informed by him, or do you think? Do you think that the time of Doctor, sorry, Doctor Who actors being informed by other actors who played the Doctor? Do you think that? That's over with Jodie Whittaker, or do you think, as I I think, she's going to go back? She's going to put bits of the old Doctors in her performance. Yeah, I think so. I think she's just going to play as the Doctor. It doesn't matter what's between her legs. It's just the Doctor. Yeah, then you don't think they're going to say that's it now because they were all men. We need to forge new path with I because I think that would be completely stupid it because be, at the end of the day, it's, it's still the Doctor. Yeah. It's the Doctor, all the memories, all the uh, things I've done, is that all add up to this one person. And you just can't change that one person just because the uh, chromosome, uh, well, the outside bits changed. Yeah. Because the outside changes doesn't mean that the inside does. Well, I mean, they say that in Day of the Doctor, isn't it? It's a uh, different, hard, different hardware, same software. Yeah. So, you know, it, just, it looks different on the outside, but in the inside, it's still the same Doctor. Yeah. Uh, and I, I certainly think that's how, if she's smart, and she seems smart from everything I've seen of her, um, I think that's how she'll play it. I'd certainly like to see how she sort of, I don't know, I I want to see a bit of five in her. Mm-hmm. That sounds rude. But you know, <laughs> I, I, I want her to be like five, yeah. basically. Just nice. Affable. Yeah. Affable, yes. If he t- <laughs> uh, So, you know, at some point in the future, we can get Femme 6, basically. That's when you take over. <laughs> Miserable and aggressive. Not that I'm saying you're miserable and aggressive. <laughs> but, you know. Yep. Um, we could have... Um, you're probably too old now, but we could have John Ferguson off Prisoner doing it. Oh, God. That's, she's the master, that one. <laughs> I I used to know a woman who... Uh, lesbian, just to put it out there. But uh, that was her major crush. <laughs> and it's like, you've got issues, love. <laughs> if that's your, that's your favourite... Woman in the world ever is like, yeah, you got issue because she was not a nice person. But uh, there you go. But um, Lucy's yeah, is, uh, Sandra Bullock and then, uh, and uh, Alex Kingston. <laughs> I can see both of those, especially Alex Kingston. I can certainly see Alex Kingston. Mm. Um, she, I, I think it would be criminal for anyone not to fancy Alex Kingston. Mm. She's like the the female John Barrowman. Yes. <laughs> like everybody just fancies her. Um, but yeah, so second doctor, is he your favourite doctor or is he sort of up the list, down the list? He's up the list, yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, um, actually, I would think he's, at the moment, I would put him about second. Plus, yeah? yeah. Who, who was your first? Oh, it's going to be 12. Got, got to be. Yeah. I really, really, I don't know why. I just really, really, really uh, related to him. <laughs> See, I'm a wuss. Mm. I, I have two lists. Mm. Classic. Modern, because I think it's. I always say it's because I'm a big wuss and I don't want to pick. But I always think it's unfair to pick from the modern with the classic because they're two different sensibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, so from the classic, it's always going to be Tom Baker because mm-hmm. I he's the one I remember first. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from the uh, the modern, it's going to be probably going to be Matt Smith. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just love the Eleventh Doctor. Oh, he was brilliant. I love I can't really pick favourites anymore. I, th- I think with with Eleven, it's that when he was first announced, I was so I'm 
can't cope with this. He just looks terrible. He looks like fucking Twilight. It's going to be really difficult to watch this. It's going to be, I'm sure I'll get used to it, but I'm not looking forward to it. And by the end of the 11th hour, it's like, yes, this guy's fucking brilliant. He's my favourite Doctor ever. I love him. <laughs> and it's like, what was I ever worried about, you know? Yeah. Uh, and to be fair, I think that was a lot of people's reaction. Because mm-hmm. he yeah, was just... Straight off. That wasn't the first episode filmed, was it? No. No. Um, oh, is it The Beast? I think it was either The Beast Below or uh, The Angels. Yeah, it's one of those. Um, but it's just that whole... It's two two parts which really did it for me. There was get a girlfriend, Jeff. <laughs> get a girlfriend, Jeff. And then when he's telling me in Troxy to uh, piss off. There's, oh, that is one of my favourite parts of mm. any Doctor Who. Because mm. it's just that that's the moment he becomes a complete badass. But that's also the moment that he becomes known to the universe sort of thing, which is the, uh, an 11th Doctor thing. He becomes too well known. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I love it so much, that bit. There's... Um, you've also got Huda Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's oh, I'm never saying that again. That's and it's just like to uh, tenth Doctor in school reunion. Yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Demundo, which is a word I've never said before and probably never won't again now. <laughs> um, it was just a, a complete sea change from from the, what had become the maudlin tenth Doctor. And he was, and that's, I don't want to go back to that. Mm. I understand what he was going for. I know what he was going for. Mm. But I don't want that. Mm. You know, um, occasionally it's fine. Mm. But he got to, he went to Fifth Doctor. Because yeah. that was the Fifth Doctor introspection, you know, and, and I suppose that's why you had the Eleventh Doctor, it was a reaction to that. But, mm. um, so you had that episode, and then the, the other end of Doctor episode I loved in that first season was Beast Below, when he got angry. Yeah. It's like, this is a bit sick. anything to say to me. Yeah, not today. Uh, and it was, you know, a case of second and six sort of coming together there. And, you know, I, I even liked Victory of the Daleks. What can I say? I like that uh, story. It was so... Oh. So Mark Gatiss. Mm-hmm. It was totally Mark Gatiss. <laughs> um, it's like the, the, the Martian one that they just had, the, the Martian Queen, the, the Ice Warriors. That's a great episode. Um, and, you know, we, as we get closer to, to Capaldi leaving, I am looking back at some of them episodes. And I hope people look back at his tenure and think, do you know what? I, what we were moaning about nothing. Because mm-hmm. he's, he's had a really good run. There were some really great episodes in there. Mm-hmm. But then I'm, I'm the one easily pleased. Number two, I don't really believe there's any bad episode of Doctor Who. Not even Rob, uh, not even the Robin Hood one. I like Robot Robin Hood. Sherwood, that's it. <laughs> I, I like Robot Sherwood because it's silly. I think you got to have to. There's only one truly bad episode, and that's because I find it just it's egregious, and that's Love and Monsters. Mm-hmm. Yes, nobody likes that one. No, because it's it's not Doctor Who. It's really horrible and mean spirited, and I don't know. There's just something nasty lurking at the bottom of it. Yeah, and Rose wouldn't do that. Wouldn't come running back from the depths of space just to come and tell somebody that he'd uh, been closer to a man. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's I don't know. It's just the whole thing's a bit seedy and mean spirited. Um, and it it was a low point. It's like uh, the production team you see, we hate the fans. <laughs> well, to be fair, Russell C. Davis doesn't hold the fans in a very high regard, does he? Uh, yeah, he used to be a fan himself. <laughs> I still, to this day, don't believe that. No, I think he, I think he liked it. Just not biggest. I don't think he was a fan. Yeah, not like Moffat. Bloody hell! Oh, Moffat, super fan. Oh yeah, like Gatiss, super fan. Yeah, I can't um, remember before the. Uh, what was a Dream Watch magazine or something, and the bloody uh, fights that used to go on, and the letters paid in that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was all that the, the politicky with the Capaldi as well. Yes. Um. So you know, he he was politic kid super fan as well. Yes. Um. Which is you know, which is great. I just hope Chibnall, because Chibnall could go either way. Mm-hmm. I he's he's too much of a RTD acolyte for me. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be as nice to the fans as maybe previous Doctor Who and Roger Owen has had been. I just hope that if it does go tits up with Chibnall and people don't react well to him, they don't blame Jodie Whittaker because it's not her fault. I know, 
like what the digit column data. Yeah, it was JNT who was the 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 problem mm-hmm. at that point. It wasn't Colin so much. Um, there were other things as well, like Jonathan fucking Powell. Yeah. Just couldn't really find anybody that. else to produce it, could there? Don't think anybody wanted to do it. No, I think it's because JNT had poisoned the chalice at that point. Yeah. And and queered the pitch of it, um, and and just made the Doctor Who office into such a den of iniquity, mm-hmm. um, and just abused fans mm-hmm. in more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> and he can't libel a dead man. I didn't come out with an operation there too. No, because there's well, there's no point, is it? I think they were all of age. Yeah. Or just about. It, just about, yeah. and it was just a case of it was they they abused their position. Him and Gary, not Gary Russell, uh, his partner anyway. Um, they abused their positions, uh, and I think everybody knew it. And I think that was when Cartmel came in. If they'd have passed it to Cartmel, yeah, it would have continued. Mm-hmm. I think because uh, he had big plans, and I think those big plans would have would have worked beautifully. But they hit the loons blow. He's sorry. Wasn't he the one who brought the loons into it in the uh, books? Carmel, yeah, he was. Um, he, he's the the Carmel master plan. Obviously, that was him. Yeah. Uh, he was the producer of. Oh, he was a head writer. Sorry, and he moved on to Casualty after Doctor Who. Um, Canadian guy, still quite prominent in the fandom. He still does fandom, but by that point, you had um, what's his face as well, bloody Ian Levine. <laughs> Program consultant. That's be- to be fair, that was the best thing that Russell T. Davis did, to tell him to piss off to his face. He did something similar to uh, John Blum and Kate's Potter. Yeah. They're still very bitter about that. They want to yes. fight for it, and this one, no. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, Levine's a dick, but there you go. Um, he was the man, one, oddly enough, having a go and saying, oh, fucking woman, this Doctor Who is ruined, program ruined. I know. Bro flake. <laughs> Roughly. What's the latest one? Heap eating. Have you heard that one? No. Heap eating. So, uh, what gets me about this is that even this idea ain't new. Mm. You know that sketch in the fast show where Arabella Weir would be in an office with a bunch of blokes. Mm-hmm. She'd have an idea, get ignored. Somebody else would come out with the same idea, and they'd get, "Oh yeah, great idea, Jim." That that's what heap eating is. Yes, yes, I've had that done to me. Not good. <laughs> but, the, yeah, like I say, the thing is, though, that's the people going on about it are stealing the idea of fur in anyway. <laughs> Poor Alabella can't fucking catch a break. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's it's interesting times. Mm. Uh, we still don't know about the companion. I still say it's Bradley Walsh because they've not refused it. Yeah. I'm it down with all that. right. Because I like the, because I was looking at some pictures of him, there's some half a picture of him, and uh, there was one where he's got his dowdy bloody anorak and shirt on. I was like, yeah, that would work. <laughs> this well, we need. Yeah, um, that middle aged bloke who's probably divorced or something, trudging back to his bed. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, if you, if, you can, if you can imagine it, it's like Rory's dad. Yeah. Or it's like, um, I can't remember his name now, but Frank Skinner's character. Mm hmm. Um, Frank apparently isn't happy because if the, if it does turn out to be Bradley Walsh, she's like, I could have done that. Why didn't um, you ask me? Oh, I think he wanted to come back when they brought Nardole in. Yeah, he absolutely did because he had a whale of a time. He's a big, massive Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see that character back. Mm. Um, but there, you, there you go. If it is Bradley Walsh, look, I couldn't be happier. I really like Bradley Walsh, and apparently he's one of the most popular men in show business as well. Yeah. Nobody's got a bad word to say about him, so it means you're probably going to get lots of people wanting to work with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, please, Brad. Plus, I think it'd be a good dynamic to have an older gentleman and a, a female doctor. Yeah, the, the dynamic switch that and this time it's the uh, the woman who's uh, blah, 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 all this, that, and the other, and uh, giving all the overloading uh, bloke with all the information, <laughs> rather than the bloke overloading all the com- female companions with information. Absolutely. I think the thing is now, I just want it to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm done waiting now. I've got to wait another year. Oh, no. It's going to be about this time next year. It's like, I want, at the very least, I want to see the costume. At the very least, I want to see her first words. Mm. 
Well, I think um, when... at uh, Christmas, the first words, like uh, yeah. Capaldi with his kidneys and uh, Smith with his, I'm a girl! No! <laughs> and uh, Ten with his Barcelona. Mm. New teeth, I saw it. <laughs> I still remember watching that and thinking, oh, I wonder what he's going to be like. <laughs> I hope he's going to be good. Yeah. Guess what? He mostly was. Yeah, mostly. Mostly, mostly. He didn't have that many duff episodes. Oh. And probably count them on one hand. Didn't like Waters of Mars. I really liked that. I really liked the end. Yeah. I, think that's what I liked that whole Time, time Lord. Yeah. Time Lord victorious and then she fucks up and kills herself just to, uh, I don't know, out of spite. Spite. Yeah. That was put the timelines back because he shouldn't have that power. I like the fact that it brings him back to Earth so quickly. Yeah. Because it just shows that, you know, although the Doctor could have all his power, he could potentially turn bad. It's never going to happen. He's never going to get seduced by the dark side like the Master was. Yeah. I, I kind of like that, but uh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, Second Doctor. We like the Second Doctor. Big stovepipe heart in his recorder. <laughs> Yeah, don't be don't be put off if if you are of the younger genre, don't be put off by the fact that it is black and white because it doesn't matter that it's black and white. The stories are quite good. Again, it's, it's this whole thing of it's black and white. It's a bit shoddy. It's a bit ropey. Yeah, and but the animation all the last ones as well. Yeah, it's it's you know um, just don't animate the macro because that one isn't very good. <laughs> It's not that it's not this rubbish. It's it's long. It's boring. Yeah, it takes too long to get going, and that's that's some you know. Um, and that is something when it comes to Doctor Who, the, the classic series, because there were slow burns. Yeah, you did have seven part stories, which by Tom Baker era they sort of got rid of that. The only real massive seven part stories in Tom Baker are Genesis and the Seeds of Doom. Yeah, but Seeds of Doom never stops. Mm-hmm. It's it's seriously, there's not a dull, quiet moment in the whole thing. Plus, Boyce is in it, mm-hmm. which I always find funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tie you up now, Doctor. <laughs> I think, like, about the uh, about start this, uh, Age of Steel and uh, the other one. <laughs> Trigger. Like Roger Lloyd Park, yeah. Trig. <laughs> <laughs> Although he is fucking scary in that, to be fair. Yeah, but... He's, he's very trigger-esque in it, but he's bloody, he is a bit scary. But even, like, um, Roger... L- not Roger Lowe, Pack. Um, John Chalice, he's very... He's fucking scary in the season of Doom. Mm-hmm. Um, and the guy, Harrison Chase, he was in... I'm sure he was in The Italian Job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's definitely in Pink Panther Strikes Back, I think. He's, mm-hmm. in, he's in one of them. But um, that's what I like about classic Doctor Who. Spot the actor. Spot who he was in. Um, but there you go. Yes, the the, the series, uh, the Patrick Chapman series, is sometimes a bit slow. That's classic Doctor Who for you. You've got to give it, allow, allow it that. And if you are going to watch the War Games, try and watch it all in one go. Good luck with it. Good luck yeah, with it. Good. It's, yeah. Even now, try watch. even now, just bite me. Oh God, get on with it. <laughs> ah dear. Is but, that the one uh, that's got Harold go. Meeker out of there? Uh... No, it's not. Rent a ghost. Yeah, rent a ghost. Yeah, he's a war chief, isn't he? I think so. <laughs> and uh, Colonel Crichton's in it as well. Yeah. But I plays Colonel Crichton in the Five Doctors. He's one of the World War One guys. Yeah. So yeah, the actors, it, admittedly not as bad or uh, you know Michael Sherd proportions, but <laughs> I was in it like a million times and dies every time. But there you go. Um, Brilliant stuff. Uh, So Second Doctor, we like Second Doctor. Go watch Second Doctor stuff. We shall be back very soon with the Third Doctor. And this will be interesting because he's one of my favourites. I really love the Third Doctor. I know a lot of people don't and it's unfashionable to now because he's very sexist. But... (laughs) Well... Do as I say, girl! Product of its time. Yes. (laughs) He definitely... (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, not you. <laughs> and then you got Sarah uh, Jane, and that's uh, where all the fun went, and that's where uh, we realised the fun ended. Yes, because <laughs> he really didn't like her. <laughs> that's where uh, feminism started coming into Doctor Who, which is not a bad thing, really. 
It's not a bad thing, but I don't think the third Doctor coped with it. Well. No, he didn't. Whereas, whereas uh, the fourth fucking loved it. <laughs> he, he was all over that, is what he was. Um, but anyway, uh, Lee, if somebody has wanted to find you on the old wide world of the interwebs, uh, how's the best way to do that? Well, I've decided to go back to Twitter, so you can find me under Lee underscore fits in with his head. And you can find us on Instagram as Lee Wild Time, which I'm going to change soon to Lee Fits in, so it's all cohesive. Oh, very corporate branding. <laughs> and then there's the uh, Never Beaten Podcast uh, page, where I, which I tend to update with the most ridiculous concepts ever. Yes, which is always fun. I mean, I do try, uh, but I've got back to the 80s to run as well, so I do try to put stuff up if I can. If I find stupid uh, stuff on the internet about Doctor Who, I will always try and stick it on there. Uh, excellent stuff. Uh, if you want to find uh, us, obviously yeah, you can do on the Back to the 80s pages, go to the Back to the 80s stuff on Facebook. But we also have the Nerva Beacon Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Nerva Beacon podcast and on Twitter at Nerva Beacon pod. Mm. Excellent stuff. Uh, well, thank you uh, for, for being uh, the co-host again this week there, Lee. Thank you for letting me uh, do this with you. I've been, been tra- talking about this for years. Well, we, the thing is, we have been talking about this. Is just like the conversations we've had on Facebook, Twitter, MSN, you know, like in the old days, yeah. um, like sort of because like ten years ago, I think we were talking on MSN about Doctor Who and when the series was on uh, back then. Um, so yeah, this is just a usual conversation that we yes. have. But uh, <laughs> we'll try and get you on the main podcast again soon because obviously last time we talked about the younger ones, we'll get you talking about something soon uh, as well. Um, say bye bye, Lee. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. We shall see you on the next Nerva Beacon. Bye-bye for now.